five years since I installed these solar panels here on my house, and the idea was to save money. So today we're gonna take a look at all the data, see if that's panned out, and see whether or not I would do it again. Let's dive in. To start, my system consists of 16 panels that generate a total of around five kilowatts during the peak part of the day. I have a string inverter in the garage, which is good and bad because they're known to be reliable, but I do have a single point of failure. I also have power optimizers on each panel so I can monitor the performance individually and not just of the overall system. In addition, but not related to this specific video, are my two Tesla power walls and my Span smart panel, which give me an extremely capable system to manage and monitor my energy use, as well as control when and where that energy goes. If you wanna know more about either of those systems, I'll put links in the description for you to go check those videos out as well. Also, I live in California, which is a state with net energy metering, which is a policy that makes this whole system worth it financially. We'll talk more about that later. And in particular, I live in San Diego, which is one of the sunniest places in the United States, but, but really just in the top 20. I thought it'd be more than that. And those solar panels are just bringing a ton of energy to my house there, which also brings up something else. Today's sponsor, Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is reinventing cereal for us grown-ups. It brings back that childlike nostalgia of getting up on Saturday morning and throwing all the sugar and everything in there and just slurping away to your heart's content. But now, as a grown-up, they have a much healthier version that you can still enjoy and kind of relive your childhood. Magic Spoon has zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four to five net grams of carbs in each serving, along with only 140 calories. So you can start your day like I've been for the past several months. Fun fact, they, uh, the boxes they're sending me are getting smaller because I'm eating so much of it and giving it away. Uh, but you can start your day relatively simple in a nice and easy way that will give you tons of energy and really help you throughout your morning. And here they are. This is the variety pack that you're gonna get. You get the peanut butter, you get the cocoa flavored, you get the uh, frosted, and then you get my favorite, the fruity. This is by far my favorite, which is funny because as a kid, I didn't really like fruity cereal. I like more of the, the chocolate, but however they formulated this one, they just nailed it. So this is the variety box that you can get right now, and they're gonna hook you up. Click the link in the description down below and grab a variety pack to try it out today. Be sure to use the promo code Ben Sullins at checkout and get $5 off any order, or go to magicspoon.com slash Ben Sullins. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So click the link below and use the code Ben Sullins for $5 off, or just go to magicspoon.com slash Ben Sullins and save $5 today. All right, now back to the video. Five and a half years ago, I installed this setup and it cost me around $20,000 upfront, which I paid in cash. And then I received a 30% tax credit, bringing the net cost of the system down to $14,000. At the time, my solar installer estimated that it would pay for itself after about six and a half years of operation. And if we look at the actual data, five and a half years later, we can see that we are ahead of schedule and it has already paid itself off by generating just under $15,000 worth of energy. Here's how I got that. I took the amount of energy that my system has generated and multiplied it by the price of that electricity for my house during that exact month. I didn't take a statewide average or a nationwide average. I took that exact price that I would have paid for that energy during that month from my electric company. And then I added that up across the entire time of the operation. And once you add that all up, you can see that it has paid for itself. Now, this is largely due to the rate hikes that have went up sharply over the past few years from my local utility. From last year, 2021, to this year, 2022, for example, they raised rates almost 18%. And since I had these solar installed, the rates have went up almost 60%. That's absolutely insane. And with the future energy needs and energy crisis happening all over the world, this is just another reason why I think having something that you can kind of be the master of your own fate, the, the controller of your destiny here is so worth it. You forget, you know, saving a couple bucks here and there. The fact that the energy system and grid and governments and they can decide whatever they want to do, but it won't affect me because I am kind of in control of my home's energy use and even its generation. Now, in addition to that, these panels are rated to last another 20 years or so. And if that turns out to be true, then adding all that up, they should generate about $80,000 of more value than they've already generated to date. Now that's using the estimates that my installer had provided when I first got the system installed, but given the reality that we've been looking at so far, those estimates have turned out to be a bit conservative. 
So was it worth it for me financially? Absolutely, no doubt about it. But depending on where you live, there are a few key things that could drive that math one way or the other. The biggest factor that led to this being a success for me is an agreement that the state has with the utility provider called net energy metering. Net energy metering, or just NEM for short, allows me as the homeowner to sell excess energy back to the grid at a retail price. That retail price is whatever I would have been paying for that energy during that exact period of time. Now where I live, we have time of use pricing, which means that at certain times of the day, it's more expensive than others. So depending on when I'm sending energy back changes how much I get credit for. Now the current NEM rules known as NEM 2.0 aren't an exact dollar for dollar match in terms of how much I get credit for, but it is fairly close. There's like a little tax on there, but in general, it's almost that exact amount, which means it's super worth it for me to generate as much energy as I possibly can to build up that credit. So that way in other months when maybe the sun isn't as shining as much, again, San Diego, it happens a lot, um, I can kind of use those credits and just never really have much of a bill. In fact, right now, including taxes and everything else, I pay around $30 a month and that varies. So it's about a dollar a day to power my entire house as well as fuel my two electric cars. Not a bad deal, honestly, when you think about all the other things you probably spend money on. Currently, 41 states, in addition to Washington, D.C., America, Samoa, the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico have mandatory net energy metering policies in place. Some utilities also have voluntary NEM arrangements for customers, such as in Texas and Idaho, where it's not mandatory, but some utilities do offer NEM. So most likely, you live somewhere in the U.S. or any of these other territories that have this kind of a policy in place, which means that the math and how it worked out for me could work out very similarly for you. This may change, however, as the current proposal for the next generation of NEM, known as NEM 3.0, in California would dramatically reduce the credits that you get for sending that energy back to the grid. This new proposal would essentially cut those credits by about 70%, as well as tax anyone with solar on their roof up to the tune of about $100 per month. Now, this has been met with a ton of pushback, as it is really counterproductive for the state to meet their climate goals. But with the energy companies and the lobbyists and politicians involved, you know that things are going to be a mixed bag. And so NEM3 could really hurt the adoption of solar here in California and then all the other states that follow along with the policies that we kind of start out with. Now, on the other side of that coin, the Inflation Reduction Act that the Biden administration just passed has brought that federal tax credit back up to 30 percent through 2032. So when you're thinking about the cost here, you should be able to get a healthy discount, which includes your solar panels, plus any of the other things that are kind of on that same ticket, like a home battery or potentially even roof repairs that you need to do. Now, in terms of what I would do differently, the biggest regret I have with this system is that I don't have enough solar panels to live entirely off grid. Because I do have some batteries, if I had enough solar, I could essentially just disconnect from the grid and not need it ever again. And in an experiment I did with my current system, I lasted around five days entirely off grid without changing any of our behavior. Now in that experiment, I calculated that if I had two or three more solar panels, I would have been able to essentially go off grid forever, or at least until one of the hardware pieces failed. So maybe 10 years or so. So lesson one is to fill up your roof with as much solar as you can fit because your energy needs are likely going to increase and the cost of adding one panel later is far more than adding a few more panels today. The reason for that is because in order to add one panel, you have to apply for permits, you have to redesign the system, and you potentially have to upgrade your inverter to handle that added energy. So if you're getting a quote for solar today, I would maximize your roof space and get basically as much as you can fit or is as allowed by your local law. The next thing I would have changed is the inverter type. I have a small garage and I don't need any more white boxes mounted around things taking up space. So rather than having a string inverter, I would have got micro inverters which are tucked up underneath the panels and they don't take any additional space in your garage. Now, I also could have just mounted my string inverter outside of the garage, but my thought initially was that my power walls were going in the garage and I wanted it right next to them. But as you may have seen in my power wall video or link in the description if you wanna check that out, you can't just install those anywhere. There are specific places that you can put your power wall. So that reality didn't come to fruition. And as a result, I have this big white box in my garage taking up space where I desperately need it. 
Now, another thing I would have changed or done differently, and it's sort of a superficial one, is I would have changed the design of the panels that I got. These ones here have these sort of chrome outline around each individual cell, and it just isn't the best looking, I don't think. I would have got these solid black panels that you can get from lots of different places, and I think it just gives it a cleaner, simpler look, almost like an induction cooktop. I really like it, and had I done it again today, that's what I would choose. And my last bit of advice is to not wait. The sooner you get these on your roof, the sooner you'll stop having an electricity bill and the payback of your investment begins. Now already solar panels on my house have paid for themselves and I have roughly 20 more years left on the warranty, which means it's all profit from here. It's all gravy. And if you do want to get a quote and figure out whether or not the solar is right for you, check out the link down in the description for Energy Sage. It's a marketplace where you submit your info and installers bid on your project. They don't get your info, so you're not being sold to and bombarded with phone calls and all that kind of nonsense. Instead, they give you a dashboard showing all the different information and bits of each quote so you can make a more informed decision. Now I used Energy Sage five and a half years ago to get solar and I couldn't be happier. So again, if you're interested, check out the link in the description and see if it's right for you. Now that's it for this one guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.